Hey YouTube, I'm Will J Bailey, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a hardback accordion sketchbook with 100% cotton Saunders Waterford watercolor paper, complete with elastic strap. So this project was a special order from one of my customers. The followers of the channel will know that as well as being an artist and photographer, I also make and sell handmade watercolor paper sketchbooks on my online shop. And you can find links to it here and in the description below. This is quite a different sketchbook to the type I normally make, where sheets are folded into each other to make signatures, sewn, pressed and glued together on one side to create a text block, then attached to a single cover. Accordion books are effectively one long sheet made from separate pieces of paper glued together, which are folded over each other in sequence, attached to individual hardback covers at either end, and in this case, held together when closed by an elastic strap. Because every page is directly adjacent to another on either side when opened, accordion books have their own distinct character, a sequential narrative quality and a sense of being one singular piece of artwork. Now, whilst you can use most types of paper for this design, personally, I always use 300 GSM mold made 100% cotton watercolor paper for my sketchbooks. Now, whilst it is expensive, I think it's the best paper to use for more polished sketchbook work because it's so hard wearing, archival, versatile, and technically superior, particularly for wet media. Now, for this book, my customer requested Hot Press Saunders Waterford. Made by St Cuthbert's Mill here in the UK, it's a gorgeous paper. Less firmly pressed than Fabriano Artistico, so a bit softer and thicker, and perhaps not quite as well suited for hard media. But it's amazing for painting, particularly with watercolour and gouache. And Saunders Waterford is a long grain paper, so the cotton fibres predominantly run across the length of the sheet. As with all books, the grain direction must run parallel to the spine, or in this case, the folds, to prevent warping. So I divided it up like this. Each 56 by 76 centimeter sheet is torn into three pieces, 23 centimeters high. These 3.5 centimeter strips on the top and bottom are removed in order to make all the edges torn, since these edges are cut on the sheets. These three pieces will then be folded three times in alternating directions to make three 18 centimeter pages and a two centimeter folded flap on the right hand side. Once glued together, two full sheets create a 3.2 meter long accordion with 18 pages measuring 23 by 18 centimeters made up of six individual pieces. I also included two separate end papers made from 300 GSM hot press Bockingford watercolor paper to give the inside of the covers cut edges instead of torn, which I think looks much neater. Bockingford is also made by St Cuthbert's Mill. It's made of wood pulp rather than cotton, so it's a bit cheaper, but it's also very strong, has a lovely surface texture, cut edges, and works very well for this purpose. The front end paper is 23 by 20 centimeters, including a two centimeter folded strip for the joint. The rear end paper attaches to the joint of the last piece of Saunders, so it measures 23 by 18 centimeters. Now I should point out that Fabriano Artistico would actually have been a much easier paper to use for this project than Saunders Waterford. It's a short grain paper with four deckled edges, so I could have divided the paper like this to create a 28 by 18.75 centimeter book and it would have only needed one tear down the middle and five joints instead of seven. But Saunders is what we use, and whilst it did take a bit longer, it still worked really well. The first stage is to tear down the paper. First, I marked the measurements with an HB pencil on the rear of the paper, and you can tell the rear from the front by the slightly more dimpled surface texture. Also, it's the side with the watermark on. Wearing gloves to protect the surface, I carefully folded the paper along the pencil line, first with my hands and then again with a bone folder using a sheet of tracing paper to protect it from burnishing. I then used the bone folder to carefully tear down all the pieces, 
being especially careful not to rip off any of the corners. I then stacked the six pieces front side up with the watermark on the left and numbered each one in sequence in the left hand corner. And this is a design for the folds. You can see that pieces one, three and five fold up, down, up, down and pieces two, four and six fold down, up, down, up. All of the joints attach to the underside of the next sheet, making the entire front side of the paper effectively seamless. Now be aware that this design choice does have a side effect. Because these joints are flush and these joints are inset, each section moves about half a millimetre or so to the right. And this makes the text block wedge shaped rather than square when closed, so the covers don't quite line up. Now, I actually really like this shape, I think it feels sculptural and has character, but if you want them to line up and be square, you will need to make these pages slightly narrower to compensate for the inset joints. Next, I removed the deckled edges from the left hand side of each piece so that all the jointed folds could be glued flush. Now, I used my rotary cutter, but you could alternatively use a scalpel and cutting ruler. I left the right hand side deckled since these are not inset, but you could cut them too if you prefer. I made sure to mark the guidelines on the top of each fold so that I could see what I was doing. And since each piece folds in different directions, they need to be marked on both sides, twice on one side and once on the other. Pieces one, three and five go top, bottom, top, and pieces two, four and six go bottom, top, bottom. That's why it's so important to number the pages so that you can clearly and easily see which sheet is which and which side is which. I also made sure to measure in the same direction from left to right. And with the folds done, I then erase all the pencil marks. And it's best to do this before gluing because glue will seal the pencil marks, making them harder to remove. For the end papers, I always measure and mark Bockingford on the rear of the paper. If you view the surface texture under a light, the rear of the paper is flatter. I made the cuts using my rotary cutter, but again, you could use a scalpel and cutting ruler. With all the pieces cut and folded, the next stage is to glue them together. For this project, I used the same conservation grade PVA that I use for my regular books, M289 from J. Hewitt. Now, M289 is specifically designed for bookbinding, so it's pH neutral, it won't go yellow or brittle with age and can be delaminated with water in case the book needs to be deconstructed in the future. Now, I was worried about that bit with this specific book, i.e. that the joints might come apart under heavy washes of watercolour, but I did tests and it was absolutely fine. It didn't come apart at all. Now, PVA comes in many different types and most full strength versions should work okay but I would recommend still using a good quality archival glue if possible. Now I glued each piece in order, starting by attaching the front end paper to piece one and making my way through sequentially to the back end paper. Now with this type of book, one of the challenges is to keep the surface of the paper clean. It's really easy to spread glue onto the pages, so you need to be very careful and have a system. I kept several pieces of scrap paper to hand plus a couple of pieces of kitchen roll, one lightly damp and one dry. With the scrap paper underneath, I carefully applied the glue to the tab, working from the crease out to the edge. I pressed the two pieces together on top of the scrap paper, making sure to keep everything firmly positioned in one place. If you move the pieces around, you risk spreading the glue underneath. I then used the lightly damp kitchen roll to clean any excess glue from the edge of the, of the seam, immediately wiping it afterwards with the dry kitchen roll to dry it off. It's important to do this very gently to prevent damaging the surface of the paper. And carefully lifting up the two joined pieces, I removed the scrap paper from underneath and put it to one side. I then turned the pieces over and repeated the process to the seam on the rear. Testing the folds to make sure the book closed properly, I double checked the surface of the paper to remove any glue spots if necessary, then left it to dry for a few minutes before moving on to the next piece with a fresh piece of scrap paper underneath. 
Once the text block was finished, I pressed it in my book binding press, sandwiched between two clean pieces of greyboard. If you don't have a press, you can just use a heavy pile of books. And the next stage is to make the covers. I made these using black archival buckram, glued to 2.5 mm thick traditional Dutch greyboard. Now, you can use any covering material you like, but in my opinion, you can't beat buckram cloth for making sketchbooks, because it's wipeable and extremely tough and hard wearing. Library buckram is the standard, but I use archival, which is thicker and stronger and well worth the extra cost. Now I buy my grey board and all of my bookbinding materials, excluding paper, from J. Hewitt and Sons. I designed the covers to overlap all four edges of the end papers by 6mm. So both pieces of grey board measured 19.2 by 24.2 centimetres. I cut them out using my rotary cutter, which does handle that thickness of board, though only just. Note that, like paper, grey board also has a grain direction, and this also needs to run parallel to the folds. But again, you can check this by feeling the resistance when bending it. For the buckram, I overlap the board by 2cm on each side. On top of some scrap paper, I applied PVA glue to the board using a short pile roller, pressed it down onto the buckram, then flipped it over and rubbed the cover down using a piece of greaseproof paper. Once dry, I cut out the corners using a sharp 10A Swan Morton scalpel. The key to getting good corners is to make sure you start the cut from about a millimetre out from the corner of the greyboard, and not to make the angle of the cut too shallow, so that the material has room to wrap around the board. If you don't do it perfectly, and there's a gap, you can use a black marker pen to hide it. Then I glued down the flaps. Using quite a lot of pressure and with a dry piece of kitchen roll as padding, I made sure the buckram wrapped tightly around the edges and firmly down onto the back. I then pressed them in my book binding press for a few hours, sandwiched in between two boards. Now, you don't have to include an elastic strap to hold the book closed, but I thought it was important in order to make it more secure. I actually sourced my elastic from my wife who's a milliner and has tons of it kicking around, but you can buy it from a traditional haberdashery or probably Amazon. The piece I used was quite wide, about maybe 1.2 centimetres, and it worked really well. Following the rule of thirds, I marked the position of the strap in pencil 6.5 centimetres from the side and 2.5 centimetres from the top on the rear board. Using a sharp 10A Swan Morton scalpel, I cut two lines into the board, the same width as the elastic, one millimetre apart, then used the tip of the scalpel to gradually remove the board in between. When I reached the buckram and just started to pierce it, I turned it over and cut through from the other side, carefully removing a one millimetre wide strip of fabric. Then I pushed the elastic through. Next I marked out a two centimetre strip, the same width as the elastic. Cut around this, down about a millimetre or so, and then removed the greyboard material with the tip of my knife. The resulting hole should be deep enough for the elastic to sit underneath the surface of the board, so that it will eventually be invisible underneath the end paper. I then cut out a square of mull about four or five centimetres wide, and sewed it onto the elastic. I used beeswax coated linen sewing thread, but you could use a different type if you like. I glued the elastic into the hole using Araldite Rapid two-part epoxy glue. You could also use a hot glue gun for this, I just don't own one. Araldite is a great glue though, it's very strong and sets in about five minutes. Just make sure you mix the two parts together thoroughly on a scrap piece of board and don't get any on the book or your table because it does not come off. Once dry, I then used PVA to glue down the mull. Next, I placed the text block in between the two covers to get the tightness of the elastic just right. It should be tight enough to hold the book firmly closed, but have enough give to easily pull around the side of the cover. Once set, I then repeated the process to glue down the elastic on the other side. And with the covers made, the final task was to glue them to the text block. 
First, I marked six millimeters in from each corner with a white jelly roll as a guide. Then, placing some tracing paper under the end paper, I applied PVA with a roller and glued the two together. I made sure to clean off any excess glue with some lightly damp kitchen roll and rubbed it down with a piece of greaseproof paper. I then repeated the process on the other side. Now I couldn't press the book in my book binding press as I normally would because the elastic would make an indentation, so I just had to do it by hand. And that's it, a beautifully bound accordion sketchbook with 300 GSM hot press Saunders Waterford watercolour paper. And my customer was really happy with their book and I really hope that you follow this tutorial and make your own. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like and if you want to see more content like it, please hit subscribe. And until next time, ciao. Thank you.